Hey guys, it is Wingy here and welcome to the worst fucking hair since lockdown began. Anyway, what we are going to be doing today is a video that I have not done for a while, which is my top three best or top three worst doctor story things. You've seen them before, or at least I assume you have. Either way, what this is, is I take three stories from each of the doctors that I think are the best of that doctor or the worst of that doctor. In this case, we are doing the best of the original doctor, William Hartnell. Now the first Doctor and his era, I've got to admit, is not one of my favourites. However, that's not to say that this era, well I mean it's important because it's the very first one, but it also has some very good stories in there as well. So today I'm going to be giving you my personal top three first Doctor stories. So first of all, we're going to go with the Dalek Invasion of Earth. Now this is a story that I've spoken about a couple of times and I have to admit, this is probably my favourite Hartnell story because I find myself revisiting this one more than any of the others. For me, Hartnell and the Daleks, they sort of go hand in hand. I really enjoy the first Doctor's stories with the Daleks. I think the original one, well, I, to be fair, I think a lot of them are quite slow and I do think that they need a bit of fat trimmed off of them, but overall they are enjoyable stories. For me though, this is my personal favourite. What we take for granted now is the fact that, yeah, Earth invasion stories from Daleks or any sort of alien is common ground in Doctor Who. It was pretty much the entirety of the third Doctor's era. However, this was like the first time that that happened. And seeing that the Daleks were such, and still are, such an iconic villain and monster and design and all this sort of stuff, seeing them for the first time invade Earth, seeing them wander around famous locations around London. I imagine it would have been a really fun story to watch the first time around back in 1964. I think the thing with Dalek Invasion of Earth as well is I love how the Daleks are portrayed. There's a couple of moments that really stand out for me. The first one is the cliffhanger where the Dalek comes out of the water. I think that was such a unique and really clever and innovative idea. I don't think we've seen Daleks do stuff like that too often since, or I don't think anybody shot the Daleks like that since. But also the moment where there's that guy who's escaping from the ship and the Daleks just surround him slowly and just eerily say kill him and surprise surprise to kill him. It's moments like that that really make the Daleks feel powerful and like they could potentially be these overlords of the earth. I mean they essentially are at this point. They've also got robo men in this story as well which they kind of feel redundant on the one hand because I personally prefer it when the Daleks just use themselves to take over places and you know use their own wits and schemes and whatnot. I don't particularly like the Daleks having another species underneath them because I feel that's not what the Daleks are about. However, the Robomen are a nice addition and I think that scene of the Roboman going a bit crazy towards the beginning of the story, it's, it's a really fun scene. Not for the Roboman, but it's fun for me to watch. I love the sets in this story as well. For, for some reason it's always stood out to me, like the Dalek spaceship in this. I've always enjoyed, like I like the layers to it. Again, it's set design like that that really makes this story come to life. There's certain stories that are absolutely fantastic, but the sets just don't reflect how good the script is. This really has an imagination to it. And of course, it's known and notable for Susan leaving at the end of it, which is handled really, really well. And I think William Hartnell's iconic now speech is phenomenal. Next up then, we're gonna be talking about the War Machines. Now I've got to admit, this is exactly my sort of story. This is the type of Doctor Who story that I love. Anything to do with like artificial intelligence taking over or like replacing humans, that sort of thing, is just right up my alley. I think something that is really clever and something that I wish we saw more of is quite early on in this story, the Doctor sort of looks up and is like, I sense evil somewhere, like an evil alien presence. We don't really get the Doctor do that too much. Usually it's just the Doctor and whoever shows up and then stuff happens and then the Doctor gradually figures it out and blah, blah, blah. But I like that he's sort of got this premonition at the start of this story where he's like, hang on, there's something not right here. I can sense it. There's an alien life on there. I don't like it. Let's go and check it out. I also like the fact that they use the Doctor's companion against him. Dodo is controlled by Wotan. And that was quite an interesting twist. I mean, again, these are things now that seem like any other episode of Doctor Who, like a companion being taken over or mind control and, you know, sort of stuff like that. But back then it wasn't that common. So this story was really ahead of its time. Like this story could have easily worked a lot later on in like the 70s or the 80s or even now. The War Machines themselves, I think, look awesome. They are a product of the 1960s though. They are a bit big. They are a bit clunky. 
and I think today especially they would be a lot more streamlined. However, they are cool. This story also introduces us to both Ben and Polly who would be the companions for the Doctor until his regeneration and then carry on all the way up until the faceless ones. Ben and Polly I really like and in this story it's one of the few times because usually when I do talk about Ben and Polly in stories I will typically say Ben didn't do very much. In this story I can't really say that because I feel like Ben did do significant things in this story or at least is a significant part of this story. Polly again straight away just seems like a really likeable character like Polly is such a sweet companion and I feel like she is quite underrated because I feel like her tenure on the show is overshadowed by other things. So for example, the first regeneration, Patrick Troughton taking over, Jamie is bound to overshadow her and, and Ben as well because he's such an iconic companion and is always associated with the second Doctor. But stories like this really show off how likeable both of them really are and it's a shame that they weren't in Doctor Who for a longer period of time to be honest because for me they're some of my favourite companions out of the 60s. The one thing that really fucks me off about this story is Doctor Who is required because his name is not Doctor Who. His name is not Who and people are going to say to me but it says it in the credits. The credits aren't fucking canon. When something happens music doesn't just happen and the vortex appears and there's writing everywhere. That's not canon in story. They just call him that because the show's called Doctor Who. The actual in character name is the Doctor. His name being Who is fucking stupid. Anyway, moving on. So, the final story, of course, of course, is the 10th planet. Now this is significant for a number of various reasons. The main one being it's the introduction of the Cybermen, but it's also the first regeneration story where we see the Doctor change his face for the very first time. And it would be the first time because before this the Doctor had never regenerated before. Ever. But what viewers at the time also didn't realise is that the Doctor snuck off for part three and had an adventure with Peter Capaldi, so there you are. In all seriousness, The Tenth Planet I don't think is like the greatest ever story, but it's one that I thoroughly enjoy every time I watch it. I like the concepts in this story. I think the Cybermen are the creepiest that they've ever been. I don't think... I mean, maybe World Enough and Time, but in the classic series at least, like the design of them, because it is off, and you might look at it now and think, it's a bit shit actually. But I think the fact that it does look a bit naff is what makes it creepy because it looks like a hack job. And I imagine these prototype Cybermen or these early Cybermen, they would be exactly that. Like you can picture the rotting corpse behind the face. The fact that they've got real hands as well, not robotic hands, for me is, is quite weird. I don't know what it is, but that is a bit unsettling because you imagine that if you were to roll up the sleeve, I mean, obviously it would be an actor in a suit, but if you were in universe to roll up the sleeve, it would be like mechanical parts and bones and blood and all this sort of stuff. It wouldn't be an arm. It would just be like a hand and then <clears throat> So I think that would be quite interesting. And the more and more I think about that, the more and more creepy they are. I love them in the snow as well, where they got the hoods on and they just, you know, chop those two guys down or was it one guy? I can't remember, but either way, that bit, awesome. The voices as well, they're really unsettling and unnerving. Again, it almost feels like they're not quite there yet. It almost feels like the Cybermen aren't quite finished. That's really creepy. But I also like this idea of the twin planet of Earth being like, yeah, we've sort of, we've sort of run all of our resources into the ground. However, we need more stock. We can give you the best possible life. But you'd be like us. It is a shame that in his final story, William Hartnell wasn't in part three. I mean, I know what, I think it was behind the scenes health reasons, which is understandable, I get that. But it is just a shame that, you know, like I say, it was his final story and he wasn't really a part of it. And I think the funny thing is going through William Hartnell's era, he starts off as one character and I feel like he ends his tenure as a different one, but I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. I feel like his character really grows, you know, you see him become warmer. A lot of people say he's sort of like the grumpy doctor and he kind of is initially, but he definitely becomes the more grandfather figure. He's got a twinkle in his eye, like he's got a spark in his eye and you can really feel that as his tenure goes on. And I feel like I'm not gonna sit here and say that this is my favorite era of the show, or he's my favourite Doctor, I understand why he is for a large number of people. And I think if you haven't seen any First Doctor stories, then definitely go and check him out because he does have some really cool ones. In the comments below though guys, let me know what you think. If you had to give me your top three 
first Doctor stories, what would they be? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe for more, social media and Patreon links will be in the description below, as always, and this video was in fact a Patreon suggestion, so if you want to suggest any video ideas to me guys, then drop them in the Patreon if you're there. And if you would support me on any of those things, I would absolutely love you forever. But until next time guys, you take care of yourselves, goodbye.